although the series author has since denied it. Crikey. But he looks smart. Yeah. He became director of public prosecutions. Hello guys, welcome to our channel. Today we are going to watch Meet Kaya Starmer. He's Britain's next prime minister. So as we know that the last prime minister was Rishi Sunak and that was an Indian origin guy. So of course we Indians were very looking up to him like what he can do and can he do something. But in the end I think so British people did not like him. So now there is a new guy who is replacing him. So let's see who is he and what he can do. Who is Sir Keir Starmer, Britain's next Prime Minister? Oh. He has taken the Labour Party from the wilderness and back into government in less than five years. Oh. But his own politics remain curiously undefined. To his opponents, he is an empty suit who has ditched every political principle he's ever held. Huh. Oh. Voters remain unsure what he stands for. And there's the general sense that, well, he's just a bit. Boring. Oh. Boring. But Starmer's life before politics suggests that beneath the surface may lie a more radical man. If there's one thing Starmer wants you to know about his early life, it's this. Right. My dad was a tool maker. Tool he maker. was a tool maker, yeah. And my mum was a nurse in the NHS. Okay. Starmer has made much of his working class upbringing. He was named by his Labour supporting parents oh, after Keir Hardy, the man who founded the Labour Party. Oh. In 1982, he became the first in his family to go to university and later studied at Oxford, where he helped edit the Trotskyite Socialist Alternatives magazine. We didn't actually sell many copies of it. <laughs> he went on to a high-flying career as a human rights lawyer, taking on a landmark case against McDonald's and defending prisoners facing the death penalty. Oh. It was long rumoured that Mark Darcy, the taciturn barrister in the Bridget Jones novels, was based on him, although the series author has since denied it. Thank you. In but he looks smart. Yeah. He became director of public prosecutions, where he oversaw the conviction of terrorists and reformed the way the legal system treated rape victims. Oh, wow. Starmer's rise to the top of politics has been swift. He became an MP in 2015. And less than a year later, he was appointed Shadow Brexit Secretary by the then Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn. In that role, Starmer spearheaded the push for a second Brexit referendum. The only way truly to settle this is to ask people, do you want to leave on these terms uh, or would you rather remain? Actually, then, in 2020, he was elected leader on a promise to continue his predecessor's left-wing vision. But since then, Starmer has changed tack. He has ditched many of Corbyn's most radical policies. Left-wingers say they have been purged, including Ooh. Corbyn himself, who was suspended for downplaying the extent of anti-Semitism and then kicked out. Thank you very much. Goodbye. I don't want the words the Labour Party and anti-Semitism in the same sentence again Ooh. as we go forward. His cabinet in waiting. But that is good. He's dynamic. Mm. From Labour's right. So what does this socialist turned centrist really stand for? It isn't easy to summarise Starmerism in a pithy slogan, but Starmer has been single-minded in his mission to turn Labour from a protest movement into a party of government. Oh, no. Nice. That has meant scrapping anything that could turn off voters. And while he may not be an ideologue, he is an institutionalist. After years of political turmoil and constitutional chaos, he believes the key to getting Britain up and running again lies in moderate reform. Mm. political stability and competent government. If the theme tune of Tony Blair's 1997 landslide was Things Can Only Get Better, then Starmer's is more Things Can Stop Getting Worse. <laughs> According to me, I think so. He looks like a man who is on a mission and the thing is, like, if the man is too barred by his principles, now then sometimes what happens is they forget everything else. But he looks like he's ready to give away the principles for Britain's growth, mm -hmm. and which is what I like, I think. So he will be the one who might take Britain to the next level. Yeah, but I, I think he is not boring. I think he is quite, you know, mature, and he is into a lot of things. And he he has some vision for, I would say, the Britain. I think he's going to do his best. And normally, as I say, now, the boring men are the best men because... Mm -hmm. Like they are boring because they think a lot and and they think differently, right? Yes. So let's see what he does and what do you guys think about it? Do let us know in the comment section below. So do like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.